Okay. So, today I'm going to be addressing something that I've actually been asked by a couple of different viewers and a couple of people in real life. And that is, uh, are you going to try the new Windows 11? And if you do, I would love to see your uh, opinions on it. I don't know what makes my opinion on that valid. I'm the person who's still using Windows XP for most of everything. And, uh, I don't know. But, anyway, today I'm going to be addressing this. I am not going to be trying the new Windows 11. Not because I didn't want to, but because I really can't. So, um, where do I start here? Let's just talk about what I think about it, just from seeing it without using it first. I think it looks like shit. And from what I'm hearing, it's just a version of Windows 10 that looks even stupider. So, I don't know what the deal is with everybody wanting a Chromebook and cloud-based PCs and all of that stuff instead of having a real, uh, real computer that actually does stuff on its own without some sort of stuff. I like being able to use my PC without an internet connection if I so want to because I do a lot of stuff offline. Okay, having said that, here's what, let's see here, here we go. Here's what the new Windows 11 looks like. This is the start menu open. This thing, the start menu, Microsoft has been bastardizing that since Windows 8. But here's what the uh, start menu on Windows 11 looks like. And you'll notice that everything is towards the center of the taskbar now. It's not over here. And you can move it back, but from the factory, factory, that might not be the right word, but here it is. It's in the center. Now, honestly, the center thing, I'm so used to going over here, hitting start and whatever, I wouldn't leave it in the center. I'd have to move it back over here. That's just how Windows has been since the first version, and well, not the first version, but since 95. So, why are they changing something that works perfectly fine? But also, you'll notice the start menu with these two little dots. That's how you move up and down, and it's got your recommended. I never have understood the recommended. I don't like the recommended. I don't want you to recommend what I need to do on my PC. I want to decide that for myself. I also don't want you installing a bunch of stuff that I don't want, like all this stuff. That's all probably stuff that comes on it. You, you don't have to install it. And knowing Microsoft, if it's anything like Windows 10... You can uninstall it, but it's going to install it right back for you in the next update. So that's annoying. It's taking up disk space that I don't even want taken up because I'm not using that. But more importantly, it looks a lot like a Chromebook. Now, if you're not familiar, Chromebooks are cheap, like the cheapest of the cheap laptops you can get. Now, I know there, there's some higher-end ones. But they're still, originally at least, were an al affordable alternative to a regular laptop. All they do is online stuff. They don't have a real operating system, per se. And I know they do, but it's just online. And when I think of Chromebook, I think of cheap laptop that's going to break any time if you do anything remotely close to what you would do with a normal laptop. You can't carry them around. Put them on a desk and very lightly touch the keys because even b touching the keys too hard will break them. And I could see, okay, run this on a cheap laptop or something, sure, because a lot of laptops now are cheap shit. And if that's what you want to do, fine. But I could not see this running on like something like a high-end workstation. It just, it looks like Chrome OS... It does not look like something that you would be running on a high-end workstation that's going to be doing a bunch of important stuff. Okay, and another thing, here's another thing that bothers me way more than it should. Not Windows 95, we're getting to that. Uh, is the Windows 11 logo. So Microsoft, with the Windows 8 and Windows 10 logo, they took the color away first, 
And they made them just squares. This is the Windows 11 logo. I hate it. I don't know why they do this. Now, I'd like to mention, this is just the wallpaper that comes on it. This colorful thing in the background. The white, the four white squares in Windows 11 is the logo. Just four, four squares. They're all the same color. Why do they insist on making everything flat and colorless? Like, doesn't this look a lot better? That's the original Windows 95 logo. I mean, even the XP logo or the 7 logo here down in the corner here. When you put your mouse over the start button, it lights up. Anyway. Uh... <clears throat> Anyway, uh, I'm trying to figure out what button I press to pause this here. Anyway, um, the second reason, having said all that, having said all that, it looks like shit, I don't want to use it. I was going to try it, but here we go with the system requirements, which are absolutely ridiculous. Now, I've never liked Windows 10. I honestly don't like Windows 7 that well either. However, the one thing I've got to say for Windows 10 is it'll run on a lot of really old stuff. Back when I actually used to use it somewhat, I had it running on a Pentium 4 machine, which was an older XP machine that, at the time, was like maybe 16, 17 years old. And Windows 10, of course, sure, it ran slow because it was an old, old PC, but it did everything it was supposed to do. It fully supported it. it. It was running just fine. And I didn't have to do anything wacky to get it to install. Windows 7 will run on an Intel Pentium 2 processor, which was designed to run Windows 98. So, both of these sis uh, operating systems are very good at the compatibility with older systems. Windows 11, not so much. Here's what Microsoft is, is put as their <clears throat> requirements. And first off, they don't sound too, too bad. A 1 gigahertz CPU or faster. Okay, I can understand that. But the two or more cores on a 64-bit processor. So, here's what I'm not understanding. And maybe, let's see, it's a link. <clears throat> Doesn't say. Anyway, um, the question was, does it run on, uh, do they even have a 32-bit version first off? <clears throat> now, I understand not many systems are still running 32-bit CPUs. And not many systems are still running single-core CPUs. However, they're still out there. And, okay, maybe the 1 gigahertz, if it was an, a single-core CPU, might be a bit bad. I mean, slow. Extremely. But it should still be able to at least run it. But, it's it, at least something like an, an old, a newer Pentium 4 with like a 3.6 gigahertz or something should be able to run it. It has hyper-threading, I would think, but not important. So the processor, 1 gigahertz or faster, 2-core CPU, that's pretty easy. Almost everything running it these days does have it. 4 gigabytes of RAM, right? That's easy, too. That's not too bad. I would like to see that something more like 2 gigabytes. Windows 10 will run on 1 gigabyte. I'd like to see something more like 2 gigabytes. However, 4, okay, that's fair. Storage, 64 gigabytes or greater. Um, I can completely understand that. That's no problem. Almost every hard drive now is at least 80 gigs. Graphics card's not that bad. And here's where we get to have more issues. UEFI or secure, UEFI or secure boot capable. Okay, not... I will say a lot of systems have that. And they had them for a while now. But not all of them. I think they should make that an option. Like Windows 10, you don't have to have that. Okay, now here's where we have our huge issue is this TPM version 2.0.
I don't know what it is or what it does. It's something to do with some sort of security crap, apparently. But we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, monitor, 9 inches. Yes, any t that's nothing. Internet connectivity is necessary to perform updates and to download uh, features. That's fine. But here's what... Uh, they have a subnote underneath that. Windows 11 Home Edition requires an internet connection and a Microsoft account to complete device setup on first use. <clears throat> and I went over this on the Windows 10 thing because they've made it so that you have they, they've taken away the option to not use a Microsoft account on the Windows 10 Home as well. And you can go back and remove it afterwards. I don't know if you can on Windows 11 or not. But not everyone wants to sign in to their computer with a Microsoft account. I certainly don't want to. I just want my system to have a local account, and I want to put my password into there and have all my stuff on my computer. Not on Microsoft's cloud, not on their servers, not on the internet anywhere. I want my stuff to be on my hard drive. Okay. Now here's where we get to the CPUs uh, with the TPM 2.0. That Microsoft supports the in they support an Intel eighth generation or newer CPU, meaning it has to, it that that came out in August 2017. That's only four years ago. So basically, they're only supporting, and I'm putting supporting in quotation marks. We'll get to that. They're only supporting. Uh, systems that are four years or newer four years old okay upgrading an unsupported PC will may result in dysfunctional or broken state oh thank you most modern PCs will likely work well that's very very helpful especially if it's your computer that you do all sorts of stuff on and you're gonna upgrade it and then it's gonna be broken and here's the other one no guarantee is made that monthly updates will continue to come through on the PCs. They're not guaranteeing that they're going to continue to give you updates. Meaning, you could install it tomorrow, get one update, or none, and they just quit. And then you have a system that's not getting security patches or anything like that, and at that point, you're running an unsupported system that's just as good, or well, even worse, than running something like XP. So why not do that, because that's a much better operating system, but that's completely besides the point. So, also, you can't just upgrade it. Like, when you were upgrading from Windows 7 to Windows 10, once again, upgrading, I should be saying updating, because there's a difference that Windows 10 is not an upgrade. But when you were updating from Windows 10, or no, from Windows 7 or 8 to 10... You know, they gave you that tool that they completely nagged you about constantly. You upgrade to Windows 10, da-da-da-da-da. And sometimes they'd even install it for you. But once again, I digress. Um, the point is with this that Windows 11 does have a thing like that you can use. You can only upgrade directly from Windows 10. But if you're installing it on one of their suppo supposed unsupported PCs, you can't do an in-place upgrade, you have to do a clean install, meaning you have to erase everything on your PC and start over again. That's complete bullshit. And then I'm going to do all of that, erase everything on my computer, and most people aren't going to know how to do that anyway. And then I have a system that may, may, may be in a dysfunctional or broken state, and it may not continue to get updates. That, that's completely ridiculous. And the other thing that's so aggravating is that there's plenty of older systems that could run Windows 11 just fine. This system here, if I wanted to, which I absolutely do not, should be able to run it just fine. So a 1 gigahertz or more CPU at 2, gig, two cores. This one is 3.4 gigahertz and there's 4 cores. 4 gigs of RAM. This has 16. And it doesn't show it in here 64 gigabytes of space this one has one terabyte so it should be able to run this just fine this is a very high-end cpu this system is about six years old but no it can't run windows 11 because i i don't even know what their good reasoning is behind that i really don't think there is any good reasoning behind that 
Um, don't use this product key, by the way. It's not a genuine one. This is, uh, this is not a genuine copy of Windows 7. Anyway, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So, they're saying that it'll run on the, the newer systems. Some newer systems, some brand new computers you can go Best Buy or any of that and buy right now will not run Windows 11. Now, Microsoft has given Windows 10 four more years of support. Meaning, if you go out and buy one of those new computers right now that will not run Windows 11, even though it's brand new, in four years, you will not be able to run... You will not be running a supported system. Which, they've basically made a ton of computers completely obsolete by doing that. Anyway, uh, it, of course Microsoft says, Oh, we recommend... Uh, we recommend upgrading to a PC that will run it. Just buy a new computer. Buying a new computer that will run Windows 11 and buying a computer that will run it properly are two different things. Because if you go out and buy a cheap computer or desktop, laptop, whatever it may be, it'll run okay for a while. They get really slow really quick if anyone's noticed. You gotta buy high-end systems. This is an old HP... Well, it ain't old. It's six years old. Uh, HP Elite Desk, it's got a Core i7, 16 gigs of, batter, gigs of RAM. This thing was about as high-end as it came in the, in this, it was about as optioned out as this system could get, and it was a pretty good spec system. There's no reason why it shouldn't be able to run this. This computer will still run circles around most cheap modern computers, if not all of them. But what you're telling me is I can run it on some Intel Celeron. Cheapest things out there. But I can't run it on here. Now, I could install it on something if I wanted to and try it. But since Microsoft is being such a dick about this, and I really don't, don't like Windows 10, and Windows 11 is just Windows 10 with a different look, I'm not going to like that either. It's going to be just as bad, if not worse, because it seems to be even more of that completely ridiculous stuff that Microsoft has done with Windows 10. They've done it even more on here. So I, I just really have no interest in trying it anyway, but I was going to. But when I try something, I don't want to run it on a virtual machine or any of this and that. I want to install it on real hardware, and I want to use it for a while. I used Windows 10 for about a year, even though I knew I didn't like it. I used it for about a year on a couple of different systems just, you know, in case they were going to eventually work the bugs out, which they never did, uh, and they just abandoned Windows 10, even though they said it was going to be the last system they ever made. I will never use Windows 10. It has nothing to do with it being new or not. It just sucks. So, I could install it on some system and have run it on unsupported hardware. Of course, that system could quit getting updates or be result in a broken or dysfunctional state and honestly if it's not fully supported I'm not running it Microsoft obviously doesn't care you know with Windows 10 they were trying to get everyone to use it Microsoft obviously doesn't care if you're using this or not because if they wanted everyone to use it then they would make it run on most systems which most systems right now will not run Windows 11 so that's all I have to say about that. If it, some, if you were looking forward to seeing a video of me trying Windows 10 or my thoughts on it, here's my thoughts on it. I'm not going to be trying it. I probably will never try it. And I know some of you people, uh, 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 when I say that they're making a lot of PCs obsolete, you're, oh well, you should just, uh, you, you, you can, you can use Linux on that, and it'll be, it, 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 it'll, it'll be supported. Well, yeah, sure. Okay, I use Linux on several things. I have to say this, every video I make about something to do with Windows, to the same couple of people. Yes, I use Linux. I, I, Linux is great. I use a couple of different dis distributions on a couple of different systems. But most of my systems are running Windows. Most of my systems that I have in my collection, I just install what the sticker says. Whatever came on it, that's what I run on it. Be that XP, 98, 95, 
Windows 7, if it came with Windows Windows 8 or Windows 10, it runs Windows 7. If it can't run Windows 7, it gets thrown in the garbage. But, um, but most people, your average Joe, is not going to run Linux. I don't care if they could, could use Linux, they're not going to. They're going to run whatever most people are running, which is Windows. So if their system will not upgrade to the latest version of Windows, and the version of Windows that it was running before is not supported, then they have a system that they would consider completely obsolete, so that's going to be getting thrown in the garbage, most likely, and uh, upgraded, updated to a newer system. And it, it's just... It doesn't really, I guess it makes sense from a di business standpoint, but it's just, it, it's absolutely absurd. And I wish more people, everyone's just like, oh, okay, it's Microsoft, they must know what they're doing, this is fine, this is okay. It It's ridiculous. Anyway, that's all. Once I can figure out what button I press to end the video here, I will, uh, I will do that. I know there's a button I have to press. Is it a